Hello everyone and welcome to another Tech Lab Power Fab Tips and Tricks video. My name is Dan Lopez and today we're going to talk about additional items in estimating. This feature can be found under maintenance, estimating, estimating, estimate summary additional items. And this feature, as well as some of the cost structure improvements and the estimating life summary and so many other things, were added very recently in 2023i. So I'll be dedicating uh, soon uh, a couple of videos like this just to explain the different parts that were added so, so users can actually fully understand and utilize the things that we are doing for you. Uh, now, the main idea behind the additional items in estimating is to provide some automation into the flexibility that we created in the estimating summary. So let me explain what I mean by this. If I pull here into the screen this Excel report, uh, for years and years, our users utilize in estimating or most of our users will utilize this sum summary to Excel report and they will add or modify items into the into the report, right? Because it's, it's, it was flexible to do so. So if I come here and say, I know we are subcontracting some labor and then they can put a, any cost and that will be added into the numbers. They like that. They like the flexibility of doing those things, but the requirements were, I wish there will be, this will be safe into the actual estimate, not just a, an external report. And also, you know, if I am doing the same addition constantly, it will be nice that it will be there by default. So those things were all covered in the features that we incorporated into 2023i. Now, as I said, I will be doing a couple, a uh, couple of videos maybe to explain the different parts. For now, I'll focus on the summary uh, standard additional items and how they cover this functionality. So to begin with, as you can see, I have a couple of examples in here. So this will be differently used depending on your region, of course, uh, but I'll give you an example here. Uh, I am adding this to the section of the job site. As you can see, the, the sections listed here are pretty much the sections that we have as headers in the live summary, which were the same so that we were using in the Excel report. Uh, you add a description. You can select a quantity or leave it blank if that usually changes in a job by job basis. And then the units, we have different options to represent this as a cost in your summary as, you know, um, a cost per each, per square footage, pounds, tonnage, lump sum, day by week, by the hour, and I think also by gallon. So depending on the, the type of items that you are adding, you can use different units, uh, units and that will be represented in the right way in your summary. In this case, you can see it's a cost per day for a, for a crane rental. Uh, so I'm putting that and I'm also adding a 10% for sales general and administration and profit percentages. And obviously this is just a, an example. Uh, you also select, select here a cost code and a cost type because we want all of that to be in the right cost structure. We will we'll talk more detail about the cost structure in, in a different video, but again, we just want to make sure that we provide our users the opportunity to have a cost code in every item that it's part of an estimate. Now, in this case, you can see that the checkbox to add to new estimates is marked. And what that means is every new job that I start after I save this, it will include this crane rental by default on the summary. And, you know, in that way, it covers the functionality of being like a checklist. So when an estimator goes to the uh, live summary report, they see the crane rental day. They don't forget to include those at the, at the end and then just go and put the number of days based on the on this job uh, in particular. So, so that's a good opportunity. If you are creating something more generic, like I'll do an example here for uh, maybe coding and I'll say uh, powder coding uh, quantity, I'll just leave it as one, um, or you, you could do zero, I'll just go with one, and I will put this as a square footage, right? Like uh, if, if you will be paying for this based on the square footage of your materials. Uh, unit cost, I'll go and just say a random price, obviously this, don't take this as a, as a, as a base price in the market, I'm just coming up with a, a number in here. Overhead, I'll say this is 5% into my overhead and 5% into my SGA and non-profit. For now, I'll just leave it like that as an example. Uh, cost code, I'll just mark this as, let's say, subcontract because that will be usually that my company, for example, won't, won't be doing. So, And I'll leave the, the default cost type. Uh, and don't add it to new estimates by default because that doesn't happen from job to job in, in this scenario. So add that. Uh, let me close this go to this estimate that I have here open and let me go and open the estimate summary. 
Now, once in this screen, uh, let me utilize those two as an example, right? The first one, let me, well, first you need to go into the edit mode, uh, go to the job site. And if I uh, click the plus symbol, you can see that I have this little arrow. I can go and select the crane rental. And then I have the, the default cost. Obviously you could modify that if that will, will change as well, only for this job, uh, or you can modify it on, the, on your library. So it modifies for the future jobs as well. For now, I'll just leave it as it is and say that this is gonna be 10 days and that just goes and adds into my, to my items as well. Uh, the other example uh, I created, it was powder coating. So if I go to the coating section and click the plus symbol, I can go and select the powder coating and say that for this job in particular will be only a few pieces, which are, uh, I don't know, 2,500 square foot. Uh, and I just go and fill the cost for that as well. Uh, the other option, just, just so you know, and you're aware is you can include extras that are not in your libraries, okay? You don't have to put them in your libraries if this is a one-time thing, right? So if I, for example, uh, I don't know, I'm buying something that is uh, really a buyout item, a subcontract that I didn't have in there and, and I wanted to list, as an additional, I can go here and say, uh, I don't know, so for example, bollards uh, for the job, I'll put this as, as teal or as a buyout, maybe more, that's a, a more correct setup for a cost code. And then I'll say that I'm paying a quantity for each. It will be uh, 25 of them and it will be a quantity of 150 bucks for each one of those. So uh, it allows you to save those changes and then they, are part of your estimate life summary in your estimate. Uh, I think this will be a very helpful feature. Uh, hopefully this gives you some ideas about the things that you can do. Uh, as I said, I'll maybe be creating a, a series of videos for the estimating new features that we added. And as always, thank you for watching.